this lesson, I'm going to talk about the back foot of a hitter. One of the things that we want to see all of our great hitters do is have some type of movement with the back foot forward and sometimes coming off the ground during the swing. What this can tell us, if done properly, is that it's going to be evidence of strong hip rotation at this point. Again, coaches, we have to fight the notion and the old school way of thinking where coaches say we have to spin the back foot, which is what coaches believe to have had happened during the swing. However, it is the hip rotation that's going to make the, the back foot have the appearance in this position. It's not that a hitter can proactively turn her back foot and make her hips do a thing. The hips are so much stronger than the foot that we have to let the, the larger muscle group make the smaller muscle or the smaller bo or the weaker body part go to its position. So the hips are going to have a ton of responsibility during the swing. Now, everything's got to happen in moderation during the swing. So I want to look at a couple of key positions here. First of all being, as the heel plants, the hitter is almost flat foot at this point, which is a position that we want to avoid. As my front heel lowers, I ought to see the hitter's back heel begin to lift off the ground. What I try to accomplish by doing this is allowing my hips to not have to pull any type of dead weight behind my body. At heel plant, the ideal situation would be to see the back knee directly underneath the hip. Then that shows me that the back that the back foot is almost weightless at this point to where the hips are not going to be have to pull an extra 10 to 15 pounds of a hitter from the knee down into rotation. That the hips are allowed to just freely rotate and pull and start moving everything. Start the hips are going to pull the torso, the torso is going to pull the shoulders, so on and so forth up throughout the swing. So what worries me during the swing here is the amount of movement with the back foot taking place. The final move of the back foot takes her from full extension here into her heel plant at this position. Now again, the back foot is okay to lift during the swing and move forward. However, we want it to happen for the right reasons. I'm going to pull out here just a little bit, and I'm going to go through my swing. So on the right side of the screen, I'm going to stop myself in connection. Now the idea here is that the front hip is going to be responsible for several things during the swing that are going to be powerful. If you look on my back foot, it becomes airborne. But the timing of this move is absolutely critical. If you look where my back foot is at this point during the swing, you'll see that at contact and at full extension, I'm moving to this position. A very moderate amount of back foot movement during this position. But I want you to start taking note from this point forward. As my front heel lowers, my back heel lifts off the swing, lifts off the ground. I'm not turning my back foot. I'm not trying to pivot it. I'm simply lifting my heel so the rest of the swing can take place in a very good order. So one thing that we look at during the swing is going to be hip rotation and what it does to our front leg. Hip rotation should take the bend out of my front leg as I swing. If you notice where my left calf muscle is in this position, you'll start seeing it work behind the front line. As this happens, this is the force that is going to then bring the back foot and back hip through and it will pull with so much force that the back foot becomes airborne at that point. I'm not proactively trying to take my back foot and slide it forward and a lot of times hitters don't even know that they do it. Okay, So when a hitter begins to try to do this, that's when it becomes a problem. The more that they work with their front hip and their front leg, the easier it will be to be in this position. We see a lot of great hitters do this because great hitters obviously use their lower body properly. So the idea is that when my front heel plants, I lift my right heel and then the back foot movement and the appearance of the back foot rotating and turning is going to happen because the hips take the bend out of the front leg and that makes the back hip rotate even with the front hip which is going to pull my foot into this position and then at full extension my hips and shoulders are facing center field and I fully extended back towards center field. So that's the proper order of what we want to try to do here. Now on the screen now we'll see what the hitter is not able to accomplish. Okay. So I want to just move forward to when I see the maximum flex in the hitter's front leg and when I see the bend being eliminated. At this point I see the bend being eliminated during the swing so I just want to check any back foot movement to this point. The fact that the back foot has already moved to this point before the hips are really able to rotate and take that bend out of the front leg means that we're really skipping the natural sequence of the swing. To me this is a hitter trying to proactively shift the weight forward to try to generate power at this point. Instead of allowing it to happen, all she's got to do is lower the left heel, lift the right heel, 
and then let the hips do what they're going to do at that position. One thing that gets her into a little bit of trouble here is that when the back foot begins to move forward, she's she's not going, she's not lifting the heel and then letting and going up to the toe. So she's almost coming forward flat-footed at this point. And the overall effect on all of the swing parts here is that we're not going to see rotation take place with the head and shoulders within this circle at this point. We're going to slide forward just a little bit and if we look at the head action here she's well above it at this point. The eye level is changing during the swing which is going to going to cause problems for our hitter definitely at this point. The other overall effect is that when the back knee and back foot's not in control and when it's doing its own thing the back knee is going to move forward of the front knee which is going to put our hitter into a position where she really over rotates with the shoulders at this point and never fully stops the hips or shoulders to release the bat. So the bat is just moving in a circular path the entire time with the hips and the shoulders, which the circular hand path is something that we teach. However, if the hips and shoulders never stop rotation, then the bat never never assumes all the energy that we've built up during the swing. So we want to be able to have the hips and shoulders stop so that the barrel can can take over all the energy that we've created at this point during the swing. Now the dangerous part about this is that hitters and this particular hitter her game plan was that she was actively trying to drag her back foot which means that now we've created another problem during the swing since since the hitter has an issue of the back foot sliding too far forward her solution was going to be to try to actively drag the back foot which now we're going to make the sequence off even worse because the front hip is going to be trying to pull a weighted back leg. Okay, so we haven't really solved the problem. So the idea that we're going to work on now with our hitter, and we'll keep everybody updated with the progress, is that the front heel will begin to plant. We'll lift the right heel a little bit sooner, which will put the back knee in a position in this manner. And then we're going to try to do more work with our front leg and front hip and put it into this forward move during rotation.